This video is brought to you thanks to the fine folks at Terrainify. This week we're gonna be working on a commission piece to make a log bunker for wargaming. Let's jump into it. Never, never, ever, ever enough. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society. And this week, we're going to be working on a commission piece that I'm going to be doing to make a log bunker for wargaming. The person who commissioned this piece actually sent me over to Mel, the Terrain Tutor's channel, and specifically quoted one of his log wargaming bunkers as the inspiration for what they were looking for. And I'm really excited to dive into it because I have been watching Mel since I first started crafting. This really brings it back to the beginning for me and I'm really, really excited about that. If you're interested in the video that I'm basing my project off of, definitely check out the link that I drop in the description below. I don't know why it was so hard to say that. <laughs> Definitely check out the link that I drop in the description below. I'll both drop the link to Mel, the Terrain Tutors channel, as well as the specific video that I'm basing this off of. But that's enough jibber jab. Let's jump into making these awesome log wargaming bunkers. The place that we're gonna start is to talk about what I've done for materials so far, and then we will start diving into making these things. Now, when we jump into what I have done so far, that will only tell us what I have done so far. There's gonna be some other things that I'm gonna need for this project for sure, but for right now, what I have is a block of XPS foam. Now, in Mel's video, he ended up using the extruded polystyrene, the bubbly stuff. I enjoy working with XPS so much more, so that's what I'm gonna be using to make the actual hill for the bunker out of. The next thing that I did was I made a heavyweight chipboard base. I beveled all of the edges so that they're nice and smooth. They'll meet up with the table nicely. And the last thing that I did was I made a ton of these dowel rods that I turned into carved logs. The way that I did that was I first started by taking a very sharp blade. For me, I used my alpha knife and I just cut a bunch of nicks into the sides of them to get them looking irregular. Followed that up with a nail file where I took that over the edges to get all of the smooth edges to go away and kind of round out some of those divots. And with this type of thing, the more you do, the more they will look better. So don't be afraid to spend some time here getting them looking just right. I did a big stack of these. I don't know if I'm gonna need all of them, but I'll be able to use them in something later, even if I don't use them now. So better to have enough than to not have enough and have to make more later. That's what I've got so far. The next thing that we're going to have to do is I need to get marked on the top of this thing where the interior of the bunker is because then after that, I'm gonna start shaping this. Let's get that drawn on here and then we'll start moving on to getting the whole thing shaped up. So when it comes to making the measurements for this bunker, I ended up drawing out a quick sketch of what the dimensions are. These are exactly like Mel's measurements. I based these directly off of what he did. It's eight and a half inches this direction, two inches tall. Inside of the bunker is three and a half by three inches with a one and a half by one and a half opening for the door. Now, the one thing that I wrote inside here was that this is actually not true. The three and a half by three inch interior is actually inside of the logs. So I'm actually going to have to make this three and a half by four inside here so that when I add the logs to the walls that it makes the actual inside this true size. So with that said, I'm gonna quickly get this sketched out onto our piece of foam here and then we can move on. So now what you can see is I have my one and a half by one and a half opening here, and you can see the actual dimensions of the inside of the bunker. Those are those inside lines there, but then this is gonna be the actual cut line of the bunker because I want that to be where all of the logs will fit in. The next step from here is gonna to be to get this thing all shaped up. So we're gonna be cutting hill lines diagonally out here and obviously diagonal lines here. I'm gonna go ahead and get that done 
and then I'll explain to you the next step. The first cuts I'm gonna make are gonna be on the Proxon, and they're just gonna be a bunch of diagonal lines. So, back in a sec. So now that I have this done, I'm gonna start this section by saying I cut these lines with a hot wire. It's just faster for me, easier to knock it out, and I can guarantee that they are closer to being the same shape, but you could absolutely do this with an alpha knife. You just be real careful and shave, and we're actually gonna be doing some of that still on this particular piece, but you can actually watch Mel do his all with a alpha knife on his video. Now what we have is this very, very linear, I guess, piece. It doesn't look like a hill. It looks like a trapezoid, I think. And uh, so now what I have to do is get this looking more hill-like. So the way that I'm gonna do that is now I'm gonna pull out my alpha knife and I'm gonna start cutting down all of these really sharp, jagged lines to make them look more hill-like. And then once I have that done, then I'm going to go outside, put on a mask. People have been pointing this out to me in the comments and I understand why, very important, but put on a mask and then sand all of this to get it nice and smooth. So the next thing that I did was I ran a tin foil ball over the top of this thing to give it a little bit of texture. Now that might actually end up being an unnecessary step. You'll see why in a minute. Certainly our bunker looks a lot more hill-like now and a lot less factory made, I guess we could say. So let's get the interior cut out. I think that's the next step. And then after I get the interior cut out, then I have the tricky business of getting all of those sharp edges cleaned up. So I'm gonna mess with all of that real quick. It's gonna be a lot of the same things that I did to get this to this stage, just a little bit more fiddly, but I'm gonna get that knocked out and then I'll catch back up with you in a sec. Welcome back to another episode of Single Terrain Piece Encounter sponsored by Terrainify, where I show you an encounter that you can run with just one singular piece of terrain. So let's dive into it. So in this encounter, your players are going to have dealt with some bandit crew. Two of their members are going to escape. One of them is a sorcerer and one of them is a bard. Now, they ran off into this massive ruin complex and they found this perfect little place to make their last stand. Now there's two things that you need to remember in order to effectively run this encounter. The first one is that the sorcerer cut their hand and invoked a blood magic shield. That casts a shield dome over top of this back part of this ruin here, and that prevents anything from making its way through. And unless any of your players know blood magic, they cannot counter or dispel that shield, which leads its way into number two. The only way to get at these two bandit characters is through these two windows here. So your players are gonna have to get really creative on how they attack those windows because that is a really dangerous spot to try to get in at these two casters. If you would like to run this encounter and this is something that you would like to go into your game, you can pick up this exact piece of terrain over at terrainify.com or at terrainify's Etsy store. And you can pick that up either 3D printed in absolutely amazing quality for you to finish yourself or you can buy it literally finished finished all the way, perfectly done, ready to go from box straight to your table, and you'll be running this encounter in no time. So I'd like to thank Terrainify so much for sponsoring this video, and we'll catch you next time. One last thing I almost forgot is that Terrainify gave all StoryCraft viewers 25% off on Terrainify.com and on the Terrainify Etsy store. All you have to do is enter the promo code STORYCRAFT25 to get your 25% off. So just one more time, that is all caps, Storycraft25 to get 25% off on Terrainify.com and the Terrainify Etsy store. I'll link all that stuff down in the description below if you wanna check it out, but otherwise, let's get back to the video. Woo e. Okay, so I kind of got stuck into crafting and totally forgot to narrate what I was doing or let y'all know, so I'm gonna fix that right now. Here's the next things that happened after I got the interior all cut out. The next thing that I needed to do was glue it down to my heavy chipboard base. The way that I did that is I pulled out my Eileen's Tacky Glue, which is my PVA glue of choice, and I put that all over the bottom, glued that down, set some heavy books on it so that it got a nice, good, firm, flat bond and I let that dry. Once the glue was dry on the bunkers, it was time to black magic craft base coat those. This is gonna serve to strengthen my foam as well as give me a black undercoat. And all that is, is just a 50-50 mixture of black acrylic craft paint and matte Mod Podge. The combination of those two over top of the whole thing 
Let that sit to dry. I moved my focus onto my logs. So now I had my logs all textured and ready to go in that department, but they needed to be painted to look more like a dark brown log, something with bark on the outside. So the way that I did that was I pulled out a contrast paint called Snakebite Leather. This is becoming my new favorite paint for painting wood that is needing to look like little tiny scale pieces of wood. I don't know what it is about the snake bite leather, but boy, this paint just absolutely does exactly what my brain sees. And so what I did was I took and slathered that all over the outside of the dowel rods that I have already cut up and textured. What I did was I organized them into cups so I knew exactly where every piece was gonna go and that would make assembly just a breeze. And it ended up turning out that way. It was actually very easy to do. All I did was I put more Eileen's tacky glue up onto the walls of my bunker and then just stuck the dowel rods in. And I will say at this stage alone, they are already starting to look so cool. It's just got this really awesome log bunker vibe. And I don't even have all the other stuff done. The other stuff is just gonna make this thing bloom and blossom. The final thing that I've done so far, and they are currently drying right now, is I took and made my tops. So the tops are just another piece of heavyweight chipboard that I cut to shape to fit over the top of the bunker. Obviously beveled all the edges so they're nice and rounded. They look like they roll down into the foam of you know where the hill will be. I put Black Magic Craft base coat all over those as well, and they are drying as we speak. So as soon as that's done, then I'm going to move on to mud, which is gonna be using my Vallejo European mud to cover all over the dark, you know, blackish areas of these bunkers and getting them look like they are just a mound of earth. Before moving on, I have two points to bring up. The first one is the absolutely unquestionably awesome result that comes from this Vallejo mud texture. I've done little stuff with it before, but this is the first large area that I've tried to cover. And I mean, it exceeded my expectations by a lot and I already had high hopes. So what more can you ask for? The second thing is I'm going to inject some drama into this YouTube video uh, in saying that I came up with an idea and the idea in my head is great. Like really, really good. I have no idea if it's going to work or not, so now you get to be in suspense with me. So what I did was I took and placed the lid on top of the bunker. And then from there, I mudded over the whole thing. What my plan is is to let this dry for about an hour or so, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm going to take the lid off. <laughs> Now the idea that I have is that it's gonna basically make a puzzle piece that will fit down in just perfect. And then at that point, it will basically have no, you know, line around the top of the lid. That's at least what my thought process is. I will bring you back when I take the lid off and we can see if it works in two seconds for you. We'll be back. All right, here goes. Okay, right. there's that. All right, now I will set this over here. And again, we're back to waiting. So long story short, this ended up working great. It made this awesome puzzle piece that allows the lid to fit down in and it is almost unidentifiable with all of the flock and tufts and stuff that I ended up putting on this thing. So that was the next thing that I did after all of the mud dried, then I moved on to doing a PVA and flock mixture to make all of my ground grass texture. And then from there, I put on about exactly 1 million tufts to finish off the look. This is such a cool piece. And while mine definitely looks different than Mel's, I think that I like mine differently. Not necessarily better, but I like how mine has a little bit more depth to it. I definitely love how the logs turned out. I think those are my absolutely favorite part of the whole thing. I love how the lid is 
absolutely masked. I mean, there's only one or two places on the whole thing that even let you see that it's a lid and you have to really know that you're looking for it to not think that it's just part of the top. But anyway, this was so much fun to do. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. I typically make more fantasy things and getting into making more wargaming stuff is just a fun challenge. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, leave me a like down below, a comment, about something comments just help with you know the algorithm and all that stuff say hi i just like to hear from people subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet share this video with a person that you think would enjoy it and above all else i guess thank you for watching this is a bad ending but uh until next time i'll be seeing you turned out cool i like it